So in an age of open sourced ecstasy, yeah. in an age of democratizing lived nirvana, in an age of designer subjectivity, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. some of the things you talk about in Stealing Fire is how these advances in what you call the four forces yeah. of ecstasy. So advances in psychology and understanding of how the psychological self works, uh, understanding of technology and more advances in technology, neurobiology, what is going on, dopamine, serotonin, so on and so forth, all the neurotransmitters, and uh, and what's the last one? Psychology, technology, neurobiology, and pharmacology. We have a new <laughs> forget new, <laughs> new designer drugs, whether it's MDMA to help t treat people with PTSD or psilocybin helped for magic mushrooms, help helping people with end of life anxiety. Do you think that crowdsourcing Nirvana or crowdsourcing or open source ecstasy will change everything the same way mm -hmm. crowdsourcing, you know, has been revolutionary yeah. on the internet. Like, awesome I mean, question. is this is this something you're excited about? That yeah. can, we don't have I to mean, be so dystopic that we can actually be like, no, there's a lot of good things happening, and we have a lot to look forward to, kind of thing. Yeah, beautiful question. I wish it yeah. was that simple, not quite. I mean, my, my academic training in grad school and beyond was kind of historical anthropology, so okay. I've been running the traps on utopian social movements and how does this all go down, <laughs> yeah. and we, and how many how many dead ends yes. are there? There's yes. lots. Okay. And and so the question is, is that you know those four forces? Yeah. The fact that technology lets us safely scale this, yeah. right? Whether it's yeah. VR, AR, immersive dance parties, quarter million people, like things that used to be solitary epiphanies are now accessible to huge numbers of people at the time and relatively safely and reproducibly. Is That's that tech. Communitas, right? Communitas. Yeah, so communitas, Victor Turner, University of Chicago, talks about, like, the Quakers call it a gathered meeting. You know, people, you know, like, when, when, when the drop happens and we're Dude. all in it together, right? Dude. Tomorrowland, the largest EDC, you know, uh, electric, electronic festival in the yeah. world, sold out in 50 minutes Dude, for two uh, weekends uh, last week. Alan Harrington calls it, uh, he says, we smash our sense of separateness in temples of fragmentation in a form of electronic Buddhism. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. when you talk about that, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, exactly. It's burning, man. It's, it's you lose yourself, technologically mediated ecstasy. But everyone still dies. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> yeah. So the question is: So you asked, is this similar to the open yeah. source movement in, in, yeah. in the internet? Can yeah. you be optimistic or yeah. euphoric about the possibilities? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. And the question, the reason is, Tim Wu, uh, journalism media professor at uh, Columbia, who mm -hmm. coined the term net neutrality way back in the day, mm -hmm. but he wrote another book called The Master Switch, and he says any information technology, whether it's the telegraph or the radio yes. or film or yeah. TV yeah. or the internet. Yeah. Right, all start out wildly utopian. Yeah. Hey, it's gonna change the world. Everybody's right. gonna be together. Yay! Woohoo! And ends up centrally controlled and hegemonic. Yes. And so we would make the case that ecstasis, the ability to move these knobs and levers of our bodies and brains and access heightened levels of information, yes. right, which appear to come consistently in these states, is yeah. also an information technology. It goes from the physical to the virtual to the perceptual. We're now at the level of perceptual uh, information tech, right. which we should also presume, unless we're being naive, will, uh, will behave and operate on the same systems. It's going to start out ah. utopian. We're right there. Woohoo! Right. Going to change the world. Right. Age of Aquarius, yes. right? And it's going to end up increasingly centrally controlled. And there's three big problems that we have have to beat to, to come out the other side like the Rebel Alliance. This is, okay. this is These are the odds we're against. Okay. We're against our own hedonism, uh -huh. right? Our own wayward tendencies to keep pressing those goddamn pleasure buttons too often, uh -huh. right? And we spend four trillion dollars a year getting out of our heads. Four okay. trillion dollars a year. Four trillion dollars. Movies, drugs, space. sex, travel. Therapy, yep, you name it, right? Uh -huh. All efforts to create, to fudge ecstasis. The altered states economy, as yeah. you call it, right? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so that's one, hedonism. The next yeah. one is commercialization, right? Yeah. Can it be used to sell us more shit? And the answer <laughs> is yes, and it already is. Okay. And, and so Neil, yeah. Neil Postman, the critic at NYU, said that he said that, you know, Orwell's yeah. 1984, we, into the fear there is that our fears will ruin us. Yeah. But he said, but in Huxley's Brave New World, where right. everyone's it's taking pleasure. Soma and yeah. Orgy Porgies, he's like, he's like if he, we, our, the fear is that our pleasures will ruin us. Yeah. So the ability to be co-opted in immersive environments in particular and have all of our little pleasure buttons and all of our needs yeah. and drives and desires pushed and exploited yeah. to yeah. Can transact, it's there already. Oof. And the final one is militarization. The weaponization of consciousness, which can sound tinfoil hatty, has been fully in play since the 1950s and on and is, is absolutely happening yeah. and through this day. So those are the three, and the only the only solution I'm aware of that we you know, we write about in the book is just open sourcing it, getting yeah. out to enough people, right. reproducible DIY self awakening. Can we give out give out the tools? Can enough people boot up, wake up, and show up? So there's too many of us to shut down this time. And that to me is the only shot I can see running every single model I can think of. It reminds me a lot of the utopian, the techno utopian 
to techno-utopianism fervor that was happening in like 1999 before the millennium yeah. and when the internet was becoming really popular you know Eric Davis that's when he wrote Technosis Myth, yeah. Magic and Mysticism yeah, yeah, in the yeah, Age yeah. of Information and then there's been this kind of disappointment in the utopian set because there was this there's a hybridization of altered states of consciousness and high technology uh -huh. and yeah, this yeah. idea that the virtualization and high tech and the internet was the the, the LSD of the 90s so to uh -huh. speak that, yeah, it, yeah. That, 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 that the smartphone and the computer literalized the mind expansion mind expanding quality of psychedelics that they literally the computers manifested the mind and it feels like now we're living in that moment when it comes to designer subjectivity uh -huh. and crowdsourcing ecstasy that this is the exciting moment where everybody's like we might liberate Ourself and move on to the next phase, the change of what's possible for us, but it might all just become commodified and turned into yeah. some hot entertainment virtual reality brand that sells you ecstasy yes. for nine ninety nine a la carte from your hotel room. Yes, and then that <laughs> becomes the norm, and then that becomes in, in unsatisfying, and that also turns to ash Oof. in our mouths. It's the Midas touch, right? I mean, it's the idea: of be careful what we wish for, and be careful the world that we create, right? If it's not, if it's not God. head, heart, hands. Yeah. Right. You know what's interesting is growing up in Venezuela uh, and seeing what a failed state looks like yeah. crumbling around you, I actually had a utopian idea about the U.S. I yeah. was like into Ayn Rand and capitalism and like the, in praise of consumerism and you know consumers are the market disciplinarians, they're not dopes to be duped and we get what we want and we want what we get and, and not that we're being exploited by a system that no longer satiates us but that we're living exactly in the system that we want, perpetually feeding our hedonic hunger for satisfaction. Having lived here now for 15 years, now I'm popping on the other side of that and I'm like, oh wow. You know, all this money and status and achievement doesn't satiate, and I'm having even more neurosis and more existential anxiety, you know, and I'm not absolved, you know. It's like, you know, it's like you deal with the symptoms, you don't absolve the causes. I think you told me once on the phone, remember? And I was like, ah. So I, I, I empathize and, 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 uh, and I'm a firm just believer in a lot of the things you're talking about man so thank you for for what you're doing and for stealing fire and yeah. for putting these ideas into the world